Welcome to the prelude to my Let's Play of Monaco, What's Yours is Mine. If you already know how the game works, go ahead and skip ahead to the next video in the playlist to watch the Let's Play. If not, let me give you the rundown of what the game is. Monaco, What's Yours is Mine is a top-down stealth game that supports one to four players at a time who play characters with different abilities as they go through different levels to rescue their teammates and steal priceless artifacts on their quest to escape from Monaco. Unlike most modern stealth games, stealth isn't just an option, it's mandatory. There's very little fighting back against enemies in this game, so it's best to avoid them altogether and remain undetected. Your only way to fight back is to pick up a weapon, but you can only use it once for every 10 coins you pick up, so use it wisely. There are 8 characters you'll be playing as in the campaign of the game. I'll order them from first to last. The locksmith is the first character and the narrator for the first campaign of the game. His ability is that he picks all locks three times faster. His main weakness is that, unlike the rest of the characters who have an ability and an interaction ability, the locksmith's only ability is interacting with locks quickly. Because of this, he is generally regarded as the weakest of the characters. The pickpocket is the second character and the narrator for the second campaign of the game. His main ability is his monkey Hector, who collects coins for him and cannot be detected. This makes him very effective at gathering money safely, leading him to having many uses of his items. He can also hide in bushes in only a third of a second, rather than a full second, making him the second stealthiest character in the game. He's generally regarded as either very strong or very average depending on how he's played. The Cleaner is the third character of the game. His main ability is that he's able to temporarily knock out any NPC that he walks into as long as they aren't alert. His interaction ability allows him to heal himself with med packs in only one second rather than a full three. Because of his ability to knock out guards without using a weapon, he's generally considered to be one of the strongest characters. The Lookout is the fourth character in the game and the final that you start with. Her main ability is that as long as she isn't running, everyone on the team is able to see where every NPC is and what type of NPC they are. She's also able to reveal the blueprints of rooms she hasn't been in yet simply by being close to them. Her interact ability allows her to climb stairs, vents, and through windows in a third of the time, allowing her to easily pull people through for a quick escape. On top of that, she also runs slightly faster than the rest of the crew. Because of these four powerful abilities, and for allowing the entire crew to see the positions of the NPCs, she's generally regarded as the strongest character in the game. Next for the unlockable characters. The mole's the fifth character and the first one you will unlock. His main ability is that he can dig through most walls and common objects with his giant shovel. This allows him to tunnel his way through stages and create new paths for the team. The downside is that most of the enemies start patrolling the new paths and that it is very loud to do. His interact abilities are quite weak to make up for being able to change the layout of the level. He's able to open secret passages in only one second and break jewel cases in a third of the time. However, both jewel cases and secret passages are quite rare. He's generally considered to be a very middle-of-the-road character because of his very stage-specific abilities. The Gentleman is the sixth character and the second to unlock. His main ability is that any time no NPC can see him for three full seconds, he puts on a weak disguise allowing him to remain undetected. Unlike a normal disguise, it only has 6 ticks rather than 24, so he'll need to refresh his disguise quite often. To make up for this very powerful ability, he has two very weak interaction abilities. He's able to get into a getaway vehicle in a third of the time, and put on regular disguises very quickly. He's generally regarded as a very strong character if played correctly. The Hacker is the seventh and the third one you will unlock. His main ability allows him to plant viruses in power outlets, much like a computer so that you can have viruses following him to disable lights and cameras at all times. His interaction ability allows him to make viruses from computers and hack cameras very quickly. He is the only class fast enough to actually hack and turn a red-green camera off from the front before the alarm goes off. Because of the constant micromanaging but powerful abilities, he's considered an advanced class who can range from very weak to very strong depending on the player. The Redhead is the eighth and the final one you'll unlock. Her main ability is seducing NPCs. The first NPC who sees her will follow her around and open any locked door or handprint scanner with her until she hides. This allows her to access many areas without a virus and gives her a second chance when she gets caught. 
Her interaction ability is only useful in multiplayer, as she is able to revive teammates in 3 seconds. She is considered to be a pretty average character. Now that you know how the game works and all of the characters, you should be caught up on everything you need to know for the Let's Play, so go ahead and click on the playlist on the screen and in the description if you'd like to start watching. Until next time, have a nice day.